to return home, or I'm not able to return home tonight. And you said to drive all the way back to North Carolina. What I really like about this beer, uh, and I know this sounds like a strange thing to say, is its wheatiness. Um, if you get it around the glass, you know, and uh, you know, the the, 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 the brewer here is a, uh, is a lover of all types of wheat beer, you know, vice beer, American wheat beer, uh, and wit beer, but has really gone off in a, uh, an entirely different direction, uh, you know, using quite a bit of wheat. Uh, obviously, you have uh, those of you who have uh, uh, towards the bottom of the bottle will see that uh, the beer is bottled uh, on its sediment. Um, but it doesn't actually have a vice beer, wit beer, or really American wheat beer flavor. What I really like about it is that it smells and tastes like wheat. Uh, it not only has that zing of acidity, but there's a slightly grainy funk to it. Uh, and you'll, you'll find the word funk is going to come up several times in a good context. Uh, uh, you know, uh, this evening, you know, because there are, are flavors in some of these beers, you know, that are coming out of directions that uh, that we don't see all the time. And it's something that I think that uh, you'll even recognize, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, of that in the background of uh, you know of of the next beer that we bring out as well, just in a in a different form. You know, it's got a real zing to it. Uh, it's not too hard to see how uh, a beer of this level of bitterness. Uh, could be really uh, refreshing on the palate, especially when you are serving tapas. The brewmaster is uh, Ferran Ferrer Escola, and interestingly, he is also a winemaker. And they have a vineyard called Bodegos uh, Valonga, and 10 years ago, he was studying at UC Davis, and, uh, and noticed that he was surrounded by all this wonderful craft beer out in California, and started to fall in love with that, and figured that since he had a family farm, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could make some beers uh, like those that he tasted in the United States, but influenced by his own region and stuff actually grown uh, uh, in the area. So the brewery is uh, is, a, is the north part of Aragon, and it's um, right near the uh, right near the Pyrenees Mountains. Uh, very rustic setting. I love this here. It's like the the uh, the rustic farmhouse houses the brewery, the winery, and also cultivates walnuts and wheat and raises peacocks and falcons. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> See, this is what I'm looking forward to in my future. It's like, you know, I can go all over the world, whatever else, like, you know, I am raising peacocks and falcons, my friend. <laughs> you know, you know the, the beer is merely a sideline. I like the first one. What was the name of the first one? Uh, he's Bergad Trigo. What did you find? What did you like about it? Um, I like Hefeweizens in general, but I just I thought it was a nice, drinkable. I thought it was better than the second one because it wasn't as sweet. And here we have a, a really sort of honey-colored beer. You know, turn the flashlight on and, and and look through the bottle. That's one of the things I always loved about Saison Dupont. You know, every you know a, a you know snow globe in every bottle. <laughs> You know, I have pictures on my uh, on my cell phone of a beer that I took pictures of in uh, in Gothenburg, with uh, just big, huge chunks just kind of uh, you know coming and going. Oh, oh, Looks like a tornado on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, see, like uh, yeah, I did, 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 was like wow. You got the cell phone up. You know, they're like wow, that's pretty cool. Anjouf is an old Catalonian word, uh, and it refers to kind of a, a water cistern. They would find a depression in the rock. And they find a, a natural depression in a rock, someplace where a pool would form, and build over it kind of like a stone hut, like a stone igloo-like structure. And it might be big, it might be small, you might be able to fit a few people in it, it might be just big enough for you, know, uh, 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 for you to be able to just dunk in there to get some water. Um, but in this part of Spain, you know, they're all over the place. And so they kind of named it after this uh, this old structure. Somehow the name Brooklyn Brewery, as much as I like Brooklyn, <laughs> just not quite as cool as an Anjou. Like I, you know, I, I want one on my roof. Um, so you know, uh, in this area, however, uh, there was a great flood in 1907, uh, and they named this beer uh, after that flood. Um, and it's a 5.5% pale ale. And it's got a, a, a really wonderful character about it. I love the hop aromatic uh, that you have going on. 
Um, it is, I think, a, a, it is not a Belgian yeast, but you know, uh, almost certainly a British ale yeast with a little bit of gentle fruit. But they coax out of it, probably out of a higher temperature fermentation. It certainly smells that way. Uh, uh, more character, you know, than you often see, and very dry and very tight. Uh, in a certain way, a hard mineral edge, you know, which uh, uh, I'm assuming is coming, you know, from some of that local water. But it's got a, a wonderful firm bitterness to it. Um, and then opens up just afterwards, you know, onto uh, a, a really nice sustained malt character. What, 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 it, what always interests me with things like this is that it doesn't have really the same structure that you might expect from, say, your average American uh, uh, pale ale. There's something about the dryness, exactly how the bitterness hits, and how it somehow, it seems like almost it's going to be too bitter, and then the beer recovers from that. Uh, 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 and, and opens back up. It actually does have a decent amount of bitterness it, uh, uh, and it's left behind a little bit on your palate. Angel Torne uh, Tabago is uh, and uh, Javier Karim Correche, her brother, uh, self-taught brewers, uh, small town, two and a half uh, uh, hours from Barcelona. Now, Angel wrote a note uh, about <laughs> Their early, uh, their early experiences in brewing. And normally I would never read something to you, but it was so kind of touching, you know, in a way that I, I figure uh, it really, this is, the, this, is the, this is the real life. This is the way brewers actually get started. So I'm gonna read to you at uh, a little bit of length, but stick with me, uh, a note from, uh, from Monhel. It says, uh, it was in 89 when my brother Benjamin announced, let's make beer. <laughs> 89, think about that been a while. Uh, you know, he had just read the book The Country Life by John Seymour. I asked our father whether we might sow a small patch of land with barley. I guess the book had an effect. So in the summer of 89, the adventure began. We followed the book's instructions to malt the barley, soaked, sprouted, stirred, roasted, which was made all the more difficult since we did the roasting on a 40 kilogram old metal grill we had bored holes in. <laughs> I learned quickly that I will never be a maltster. <laughs> After malting, we had to grind the grain, but with what? <laughs> there was one person in the world I will always love and remember for when my brother and I first got in, into our heads to make beer. We broke her Molinex grinder, grinding 25 kilograms of malt. But she took it well and actually laughed about it, perhaps because it gave her the excuse she needed to buy a better grinder. <laughs> Then came the big day, brew day. We used a huge copper pot that my grandparents had lent us, almost 60 liters capacity. 60 liters. Your grandparents have a 60 liter kettle. I love that. Like, that is awesome. Like, do your grandparents have a 60 liter kettle? That's, that's two barrels. That's two barrels of beer, you know. And we, and we followed the brewing instructions from the book. It was summer, so there was no way to cool the word quickly. We pitched, we pitched the yeast, baker's yeast, not brewer's yeast, into the wort while it was still quite hot. <laughs> it, it did begin to ferment, and after 10 days, we bottled 40 75 centiliter bottles. You know, we let it sit for a couple of weeks, and then we sampled a bottle. A bottle. You can imagine who that, we, that we created was anything but beer. It tasted like cold, putrefied chicken broth. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> you know, some of us have made, you know, you, know, you gotta admit, there have been a few people in this room that have made that chicken broth. You know, I, you know, I, I have had that chicken broth run into me uh, across uh, some, uh, some judging tables sometimes. So I know exactly what it is that he's talking about. That ended the illusion my brother and I entertained uh, of becoming brewers, at least for a while. It's important to note that in 89 there was no internet and not, and not much in the way of literature out there in Spain to help us learn the process. But of course one learns a great deal through trial and error. Years later, one of the best days of my life was making the decision to take up the adventure once again with my wife Susanna, uh, who also helped pay for the brewery with her life savings, <laughs> and her brother uh, Javi, who are now my brewing partners. So in Javi's case, he began brewing after surviving a near fatal car accident in 2005. When he recovered, we started home brewing together with another friend, Albert, and soon we were brewing pretty decent beer. Salute and enjoy life, especially beer. I really enjoyed the uh, the Longju. Is that how you pronounce it? Longju, yeah. It's really, really good. 
I, I found it was fantastic with the blue cheese that we had earlier. The blue cheese and the good bread, I mean, that, that together was a fantastic pairing. So, one of my favorites of the night. Now we are, we are moving back to Spain, um, to the region of, uh, of La Sagra. Does this story sound familiar? Four brothers. <laughs> Four brothers decide, you know, to start a brewery. And uh, the idea of that brewery would be to make beers that had a flavor, a Castilian flavor, a flavor of that part of Spain. And so, uh, this beer is called uh, Sagra Boyo. Uh, it's an imperial stout uh, with uh, some uh, smoke characteristics. I like it. And here you have to love it. Uh, the head brewer's name is in fact Bob Maltman. <laughs> <laughs> when he brew in California and then in Mexico. Uh, so uh, got around. Um, and this actually came out of a, uh, 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 a collaboration, this particular beer came out of a collaboration which was in connection with a, uh, with a Spanish uh, television show called MasterChef, and they were looking to make a beer specifically designed to accompany food and particularly dessert. So the Castilian flavor uh, in beer, they're saying, you know, is for things that are full-bodied, you know, that are fruity, you know, that are round, that are soft, not necessarily overwhelming. Uh, and in a way, this reminds me, in its balance, of, uh, you know, of some of the big, fleshy Spanish, you know, red wines. And you can almost see the thought process, you know, of the construction, you know, of a beer like this. A very fine balance between sweetness and bitterness, really just enough bitterness to hold the sweetness in check. But I think what's nice about that is that, yes, this would be a very nice beer with a dessert, but it's just, it, it's, it, it's, it, its balance is just right so that you could also carry it off with a lot of uh, uh, savory dishes. 10.5%, you know, kind of an imperial stout, but with, uh, with some smoked malts used as well. What I like about it is that it's a very, it's, 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 it's a, a, it focuses most of its complexities right in the center of the palate. It starts off with some sweetness, and then just when you kind of expect that it's going to go really big, it actually becomes very elegant, you know, through the middle. And just, you know, just enough sweetness, you know, there, you know, on a knife edge. It'd be interesting to me to try cooking any number of things with, you know, with this that you might not even expect. I could see this being going really well, for example, with roasted red peppers. You know, where you bring a lot of sweetness out, but you also have a char, you know, at the same time. Uh, together, say, with some goat cheese. Now, you wouldn't think of a dark beer, you know, being served with something like that. Um, but if you put those flavors together in your head, uh, you might find that uh, you kind of like that, uh, that combination but just as easily, you know, it can end up going with, uh, you know, with a chocolate cake, you know, or with a cheesecake or the end. And of course, it would be very good, and I hope that they would not be, uh, you know, at all upset to hear this, um, with a big scoop of vanilla ice cream in it. <laughs> I do that with my own beer, so I'm allowed to say that. I'm really quite tempted to drink this entire bottle. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm now remembering. No, I remember, you know, when I went out with, uh, you know, with Jessica and we were tasting these beers. I kind of remember now. That's right. I'm pouring a whole one for myself. You know, you know did you notice that I'm the daddy? I'm the one with the microphone. Okay, that's where it goes. In this country, you see it mostly on chicken and. Uh, I like it even more on duck, and you have uh, you have you know duck with uh, with mole sauce. Uh, you're gonna go you could go in this direction. Um, you know, thinking back to Brazil, it would also be very good with feijoada, and I'm sure you know certainly it's very easy to see how good it would be uh, with some of the great uh, with some of the great Spanish hams. I expect it to be uh, much more of a darker porter, but it was smooth and amazing the entire way. Actually, I really enjoyed it. Thank you for sharing. Mi cerveza favorita de la noche fue la Sagrada Boquillo Especial. Um, 
dio, hay sabores de café, de chocolate, uh, pues sí, mi favorita de la noche. Qué bueno. <risa>